Welcome everyone to Contena's third birthday <coughs> meetup. So I'm Lauri Nevala and uh, I'm going to speak about how what it takes to run containers in production. So this is today's agenda. I think we are we are ready to go. So, like I said, I'm Lauri Nevala. I'm, I'm co-founder, one of the co-founders of Contena. And I, I have previously worked on a smaller and bigger companies. And I, I'm passionate Ruby developer. And I wanna be long distance runner. Wanna be because I'm not doing that anymore. And I, I'm father of three awesome kids and kids and those are basically the reason why I'm not running anymore. And is it because you can't run in containers? Might be. So today we are speaking about running containers in production. I have tried to keep this on a very basic level. So if you are if you are new to containers and container, you hopefully be, will get some idea how to do it. And if you are advanced Docker user, I hope I have some hints, hints, and new new stuff to you also. So basically, when you when you start doing or running containers, you might have an application already or you are you are implementing that and of course you want to dockerize it to dockerize application we need docker file and docker file is a text document and it contains all the commands user could call on the command line to assemble an image so you will basically describe that process on, on docker file every docker file it's it's based on a, some base image my my application is using ruby of course and then we can copy or add files from from our local local system execute some commands like installing some application packages and we can we can set the user who is running this container and we can define some default environment variables we can expose ports it's it's hinting hinting other user that what port this application is listening listening to and we can define work here and an entry point and commands that are executed when storing the container so when we have a docker file we can we can run a docker container based on that on, on local machine we have basically two options we can use a docker engine like use cli commands to run a container or build the container or we can use docker compose it's it's very handy especially when we have multiple multiple services like our application service and databases and we want to uh, run those at the same time so <coughs> from these two options i'm using docker compose and Docker Compose is a tool for defining and running multi-container Docker applications. And for defining applications, we can use Docker Compose file. It's a YAML file where we can configure our application. On, a, on this case, 
I have two services. I have web service and a database service. And uh, for this web, web service, uh, we are building building a Docker image from a current working directory context. So Docker is, is looking Docker file from that directory. And then we can define environment variables like what is the database address. Uh, we, can, we can define volumes or mount volumes from, from local machine to container. And we can expose ports. On this case, I'm exposing port 9292 from my local machine to Docker container port 9292. And then we can define links. Uh, basically, these links only, only affects on, on a container starting order. So I want the MongoDB container will be started before my app web application. And then we can define the command that is executed when run, running this container. And for uh, database service, I'm using MongoDB and, and defining the, the command to use more files. So this is how, how you define your applications when using Docker Compose. And to run those applications, you can use Docker Compose command line tool. So when executing Docker Compose up command, uh, when Docker noticed that the defined uh, Docker image is not present yet, it will build, build it automatically. And when it's built, Docker Compose will start application service containers. Okay, <coughs> we can try it out on my local machine. So I have very basic to-do application Example application is it's, it's a Ruby Sinatra application that is using that MongoDB. And uh, I have the same Docker image, Docker file, and Docker Compose YAM, YAML file. And in this Docker Compose YAML file, I'm mounting this application directory from my local machine to running containers. It means that if I edit, edit this source code files on my local machine, uh, those modifications will be, will be present on a container as well. So we can execute this compost up. I will pass D options. So containers will be started on, on background. Uh, I can give this build options because I have already built this image, so I want to build this again. So now it started to build the image and it creates those application services. And I can try to open this, this on my local machine. Yes, it's up and running. And I can edit this source code. So let's let's edit this file like uh, to do for Docker and save it and try to refresh this. Yeah, but it's not it's not changed because Ruby doesn't uh, reflect those changes on, on real time. Instead, we have to restart this container. And the uh, modification is, is live. But we don't have to rebuild our Docker image for this. Oh, typo. 
Okay, so now we have basically uh, development environment environment up and running. So I can I can edit my application and implement it <laughs> further, and everything is good. Okay, but when we want to run this application in production environment, the world is quite different. There are certain things that we have to think about and consider. First, how we are going to uh, run these containers? Are we going to do it by ourselves? So, collecting some bash scripts using Ansible or Terraform and maintain the system that is, is for orchestrating the containers. That's maybe not the best option. So we can, we can use some out of the box tool like Docker Swarm or Kubernetes or use some higher level platform like Container. Or, and then we have to think about where we are going to uh, run these containers. We can run it on, a, on a, some cloud. Maybe some cloud is, is cloud provi provider is supporting already some container platform, and that might be might be the easiest option. Or we can use on premises, but then we have to figure out how to install these tools to on premises. There are lots of options. Others are easier than others, so we have to select some suitable option. And of course, the learning curve is quite different between these, these options, so you have to made, make a wise you have to be smart and uh, see, see what is the suitable option for you. Okay, to build and run a container on my local machine is very easy. I just execute docker build and docker run and it's there. But it's, it's not very usable when using some remote hosts. So those servers cannot read from your local machine. So we need a docker init registry. And we can use some hosted res registry, pay some amount of money and start using it, like Docker Hub or Kui, GitLab, Container Cloud or whatever. Or you can host, host a registry by yourself. Uh, but then you have to figure out where to store those images. You can use some local volumes or you can use Amazon S3 or some S3 compatible a storage engine, but it's it's doable. Then it, your application typically contains some some sensitive data like passwords or API keys or anything. So you have to deal with those secret somehow. Uh, container, or basically every every of these of these tools, they are supporting secrets management. With container, you can you can expose those uh, environment secrets to environment variables, and with Kubernetes, you can expose those to to some file system or environment variable, and with Docker. Swarm, you can uh, you can use file system. So basically, you create those secrets, and the orchestration tool will decrypt that secret to running containers. And container and Docker Swarm, they support out of, out of the box the encryption with Kubernetes. You have to use additional encryption config resource. 
And when you update the secrets, Contena will de uh, deploy all, all services that are consuming the secrets automatically. With Kubernetes, if you are using file system, uh, the file system will be will be updated, but you have to somehow notify the running co container or pod that the secret is updated. And Docker Swarm doesn't support any 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 of this. You have to create new secret and uh, update the services to use that new new secret. So with Docker, with Docker, Docker Swarm, uh, you can create secrets uh, by using command line, or you can you can also introduce those secrets in in Docker Compose YAML files. With command line tool, you create those secrets and then reference later those secrets on YAML file. And with new do new Docker versions, you can define also the mount point where the file is created. By default, it's, it's created on a run slash secrets directory. With Kubernetes, <coughs> you can create secrets by using kubectl. Uh, you can introdu introduce those secrets on, on, on a command line using from literal, or you can you can import those from from some secret files. If you are using files, you have to base six four encode those secret values. But if you're using command line. Uh, cube CTL will, will decode those, or oh, sorry, encode. And when you have those secrets, you can reference those on a, on a YAML file, creating volume mounts, or you can you can define also a port to use environment variables. With container, you can create with container wall write command those secrets and reference on, on container stack file. And those will be injected to, to environment variables. You can also use container stack file and introduce there some mechanism to, to generate those secrets on, on, on runtime. When, when executing some container stack install or upgrade. Yeah, and typically when running containers in production environment, you are not running only one instance. Uh, when, when running multiple instances, you need some mechanism how to distri distribute workloads across, across multiple services. So you need some load balancer. With container, you can use official container load balancer. With Kubernetes, there's official ingress controller. It's based on Nginx. And, or you can use ingress Google Cloud controller, but it's in, in beta phase, so it's not recommended to use that on, on a very critical systems. There are also some third party solutions like traffic or Nginx. Uh, to be noted that traffic is not supporting uh, TCP at this moment. Uh, with Docker Swarm, you don't have any, any official load balancer but there are some third party tools that you can use, like traffic or Nginx with interlock. And 
then you need to handle TLS or certificate somehow. And it's e the easiest way is to use Let's Encrypt and container load balancer support that out of the box. With Kubernetes, you can use cert manager that is not production ready yet, or some Kubernetes cert manager, and hope that they will be they are maintained and will be maintained in the future too. With Docker Swarm, you can use traffic or Nginx proxy combined with Nginx proxy companion. I don't know how updated it is at this moment. So here's example for Docker Swarm. Uh, how to how how to use traffic? So basically, you create traffic service and use define some network for that service and expose ports and basically that's it. This is not using any TLS, so this is quite simple example. But in a, in a, on your own services, you can just use uh, service labels to define those load balancing rules. And you need to, need to of course, attach this service to the same network as traffic. With Kubernetes, when you're using ingress engine, X controller. This is the official install installation method. So you create bunch of resources like namespace, default backend, some config maps for also for TCP services and UDP services. And without role-based access control, you you also need to run one Atli command with role-based access control. There are a couple of more things that you have to do. But when that that's up and running, you can create your, your application. First, you define deployment. So basically this, this describes those ports or containers and you define service and then you can use uh, define ingress resource how how this ingress controller it will route traffic to running port so basically with this ingress, ingress resource, we can define that with host cafe example com and path coffee, the traffic is routed coffee service. And this coffee service is listening port 80. And it's, it's using coffee app, which is described in deployment. With container, we can use container stacks. So we can we can define this load balancer inside one stack, or we can we can create external stack and use that stack on our own on application. In this example, we are defining the load balancer service inside this stack file. So we are using container LB and expose port 80. And then we can configure uh, via environment variables those load balancing rules and link our service to, to this load balancer service. And then it, it just works.
Yeah, then when running containers in production, you might not have on only your local development and production environment. You typically have some staging environment as well, where you test those applications first. But then you have to think how, how do you manage those application configuration because there might be some variation between uh, different uh, environments. <coughs> At first, the configuration files should be stored in version control system. So you can track the changes and, and verify those uh, installations. You can, you can use different configura configuration files per environment, like you have staging production environment and when executing commands you define those uh, environments via environment variable what environment should be used or you can use some environment variables combined with interpolation so with docker compose yaml files you can for example specify that uh, what Docker image stack we are using on a, on a staging environment or production environment. Or you can override or extend configuration files. So you have a base YAML file where you define all, all common, common stuff and then you have staging and production YAML files where you extend those. Or you can use some dynamic variables for example, with Kubernetes, you can use Helm packages, or with container, you can use container stack variables. So you can dynam dynamically define what, what is the value of some, some variable on a runtime. Okay, so now we have development environment up and running and uh, we want to deploy this application to production environment. Uh, so I have chosen container for some reason, I don't know. And I have already created container cluster to container cloud. Basically it's, it's very easy easy task, you can just give some details how many nodes you want to have and uh, click create button. Yeah, but it's now up and running. And we can start to concentrate on, on our application. So with container, we are using container stack files where we define our stack. So this is very similar to Docker Compose YAML file. This is our to do app. It's, it's still have two services, the database and the web service. And for database, we can configure health check. So con con container will monitor this port and when it's unhealthy, container will restart or de redeploy this service again. And I'm using container hosted, container cloud image registry for this, for this application. So we don't need to worry about where we, where we are storing images or how we are storing those. And compared to Docker, Docker Compose YAML file, we can define how many instances we have. Docker Swarm has this replica stuff. With Contena, we are using instances. Uh, when we are deploying this, we can define some deployment stra strategy, strategies 
So we are using high availability and we are waiting port 9292 when before starting to uh, deploy another instance. And 80% of all, all instances must be healthy at, at one time. And then we are refer referencing external ingress load balancer stack. And we are using that to load balancing traffic to our service. And here we are using some variables to define our, our DNS host name for this application. I have already configured the name server to, to route this DNS correctly. Okay, what we need to do, because we are, we are using external load balancer, we have to install it first. So container stack registry already provides this ingress LB, so we don't have to define it by, by ourselves. So I'm just execute the command. It's, it will ask a couple of questions. You can just accept the default values. So it starts to deploy and we can see it also on a container cloud. So by default, this container ingress LB is, is using daemon strategy. So the container will deploy one instance to every, every node on our cluster. Okay, it's now up and running and it's also healthy. So we can focus on our application. So now we don't have the Docker image pushed to Docker re registry yet. So we need to do that. We're gonna use container stack build. So it will look services inside container YAML file that have a build option defined. Okay, this variable is, is asked, but we can bypass that. And I have already authenticated my, uh, the current user to container cloud and defined it container cloud image search registry for our platform. So I can just push these images to registry. So basically it's here. We can see that there's new, new repository created. Okay, now we are ready to install our stack. We can check first that, yes, this load balancer is, is, is responding, but there's no services configured yet. But we can install this. So now it's asking, asking the domain, so Let's use this todo.container.io and now it started to create the stack. And we can see on a container cloud dashboard that it's, it's deploying to Mongo.
and now it's it's deploying our web interface you can already see that it's answering here despite the last instance is not up and running yet but now and if, if you are if you can see this this small text that is is showing what instance service instance is responding this request so now it is third instance and now it's the second and now it's the one the first instance so our load balancer is doing its job okay and we have defined our mongodb as stateful so Contana will automatically uh, create data volume container for this mongodb so we can we can redeploy and update this mongodb and keep the data and we can also scale our service let's say to six instances and see it's it's scaled and we can now see that the fifth instance is is responding at this moment uh, yeah so with container it's, it's very easy to deploy deploy the application to, to production environment but it's not the ending point because you need to consider after that lots of more things like logging where to store those application logs how to monitor these uh, services or even nodes you can use some some page solutions uh, how to process process the data uh, with container you can use those stateful state stateful uh, services or docker docker volume plugins uh, with kubernetes you have lots of options to use use volume drivers but at this moment local volumes is not very very supported they are in, in alpha phase so you have to wait a bit to get support for support for those then if something something goes wrong how do you get notified uh, you can use for example rollbar rollbar or a airbrake or sentry or whatever <laughs> and, and uh, when it running containers in production you don't execute or deploy those applications typically uh, manually you are you are using some ci cd tool instead so you have to select some some tool that is is best for you you can use jenkins or drone or gitlab or circle ci or travis or whatever okay that's that's all i have have say at this moment so any any questions sure. if you could just speak into the top of the box sure hey so a lot of things that we saw can be achieved with uh, kubernetes as well 
but what would you see as the key differentiator between Kubernetes and container, or what makes it like, better? So basically, <coughs> with Kubernetes, if, if you are talking about vanilla Kubernetes, you have to interpret lots of additional tools to get this platform. And with container, there's already selected certain components out of the box. So, yeah, with both, both you can do quite the same things, but, but with Kubernetes, you are, you are the integration point that you, and you have to maintain that system. But is there some specific functionality that is like achieved a lot more better in container or with container or, or something yeah, that is just missing? Yeah, the learning curve is, is, is smaller with container. So with, as, as you saw with Kubernetes, you have to configure lots of YAML files to get the same, same, same application up and running. Of course, with Rocker Swarm, you can, you can achieve that also, but Rocker Swarm is, is lacking some features that you have to integrate also like load balancing and that kind of stuff. And, and to get started with container is, is, is lots of quicker than a Kubernetes. Yep. Thank you. Uh, so this is maybe <coughs> more general a uh, container specific question, but uh, what would the process be if I want to be prepared for my junior developer going and destroying all of the data in my MongoDB? So how do I back up and do the restore in container? <coughs> With container, you can run a, another service that is taking backups regularly from MongoDB. So <coughs> basically it's, it's it's the same with all orchestration tools. So there's no out of the box solution from MongoDB itself. You have to run another service for, for that. Okay, and when I have my backups, how do I spin them in the stack? Like a version from yesterday, for example? You, you, you can use Mongo restore command to restore that backup. So it, it's, it's not, any different than running MongoDB without containers. So containers are only the running, ba running base, basement, how, how you are running da this database, but to operate that database, you have to use one of the tools. Um. Right, so if, let's say I have a lot of secrets that I want to store in my container and I want to give some people like rights to change some secrets and some other people right to change some other secrets, then is that possible with container or some other tools? With container, no. With Kubernetes, you can use the role-based access control, but I'm not sure, can you, can you limit what secrets are, are for what roles? I guess, I guess you have one role that is, is capable to update secrets, but you can, of course you can, you can create some namespaces with Kubernetes, but then the applications are totally different then. So no single application can, can have all the secrets that have different roles access. That's, that's my guess, I'm not sure. But with content, you, can, you cannot limit those. Yeah, if not any, any other questions, so thank you. And uh, let's, let's have a cake. Mm-hmm.